Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have a tiny, creepy hand. This small, lifelike bronze hand was found at the Roman fort of Vindolanda, which is near Hadrian's Wall in England. This artifact was found by archaeologists, and it quickly became quite a mysterious find. The reason for this is because of the fact that it is believed that this artifact may have been associated with a cult. This cult, called Jupiter Dolichenus, after the Roman god, of course, is a mystery cult that held their secrets close to their chest. The secretive cult existed and was very popular with the Roman army around the 3rd century. This hand is believed to have been left as an offering after there was a major invasion of Scotland that left a large number of people dead. Little more about this bronze statue is known, and that just might make it even creepier. In our number 9 spot today, we have vampire remains. A few years ago in Poland, during a dig, researchers uncovered some skeletal remains that date back to the 14th century, and if this find wasn't already gruesome enough, they quickly figured out this wasn't where the story ended. These skeletons appeared to have posthumous injuries inflicted onto them. Wondering why? Someone's fear of vampires is probably to blame. The skeletons had been decapitated and punctured at the spine, which is extremely gruesome, and then the severed heads were wedged between heavy stones. This is what the lore at the time suggested was the appropriate actions for those who might be vampires in order to prevent them from rising from the dead again. As it turns out, as many of us now know, unfortunately, many of these people who were said to be supernatural or evil were probably just suffering from diseases of life. According to researchers, during this time period, people who were suffering from things like kyphosis or perhaps cholera were often thought of as being vampires or witches. In our number 8 spot today, we have Jerry Bibb Balasok's gravestone. This tombstone goes hand in hand with an absolutely insane story of Jerry's life. The story of it is that Jerry, who was a professional wrestler, ended up vanishing after getting in trouble with the law. He was wanted for charges of fraud, and while no one knew his whereabouts for six months, when his mother picked up a magazine one day which featured the victims of the horrible cultist Jonestown massacre, she sadly saw her son's picture alongside all of the others. This led to there being a tombstone, of course, made for Jerry, although his body would have already been buried in California. So this all happened in 1978, but let's flash forward to 1990. In that year, a man named Ricky A. Weta was arrested for attempting to take someone's life. He was fingerprinted upon his arrest, and who would have thought Ricky turned out to be none other than the presumed dead Jerry? The whole story was of course national news, because how could this have possibly happened? In the end, Jerry was caught and brought to justice. But here's the thing, the tombstone. It's a reminder of the Jonestown Massacre. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Vampire of Dusseldorf. If you've ever been to a Ripley Believe It or Not Museum, you know those places are stocked full of the weird and wonderful, and this item is absolutely no different. This Wisconsin museum holds the skull from the severed head of the vampire of Dusseldorf, Peter Carton. Who is Peter? Well, this vampire man was actually a German serial killer from the 1930s. This man committed some incredibly atrocious acts for which he was tried and convicted. He ended up being found guilty for the killing of nine people as well as attempting to take the lives of seven more. This guilty verdict led to him being sentenced to beheading, which took place in 1931 when Peter was 48 years old. I'm not exactly sure why anyone would have wanted to keep his head and skull around, but clearly it happened and now people can go and visit it whenever they feel like it. This might be one museum I might stay away from, to be perfectly honest. I've learned about way too many cursed items here and don't want to mess around with this one. In our number six spot today, we have this Viking sword. Archaeologists found a Viking sword called Ulfbear that they were able to date somewhere from 800 to 1000 AD, but upon further research, they were absolutely astounded at what they found. This sword was made with a level of sophistication that wasn't seen until at least 800 years later. The carbon content of the sword is three times higher than other swords of the time, and due to the impurities that were removed, the iron ore would have needed to be heated to at least 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
This sword was so hard to believe to researchers that a blacksmith named Richard Furrer made a sword similar to this one and used technology that would have been available at the time of its making. He said that the process was the most complicated thing he had ever made, and he even ended up using methods that weren't known to be used at the time. This is all super cool and stuff, but it has me wondering what this sword was used for and what dark parts of history it holds. In our number five spot today, we have shackled skeletons. On an archeological dig in 2016, researchers uncovered a scary sight. Buried in the grounds in Athens, Greece, were at least 80 skeletons, all arranged in neat rows, all with iron shackles on their wrists. Stella Chrysalaki, who was the head of the excavation site, said, quote, they're all tied at the hands with handcuffs and most of them are very, very young and in a very good state of health when they were executed. This definitely adds a little bit of horror to this already gruesome scene. Apparently, the method of burial suggests that whoever these skeletons belong to weren't just the average run-of-the-mill lawbreakers and they may have been in trouble for some more serious crimes. It is believed that these skeletons might be the supporters of a man named Cylon. In 632 BC, Cylon, who was a former athlete, led an attempted coup in Athens. Of course, since I just called it attempted, it didn't work out, but apparently he then fled the city unharmed. Since he couldn't be punished for his crimes, that only leaves these souls who were just finally uncovered a few years ago. I know these are people who once lived and not artifacts, but I had to put them on this list today because this discovery and story are just something we have to be talking about. In our number four spot today, we have the Skurid Inn Beam. The Skurid Inn in Wales, upon first glance, just looks like a great place to enjoy some classic pub fare, maybe some fish and chips and a nice ale. But the history it holds tells a very different story because this used to be a place for public hangings. Seems like a weird spot for a pub now, doesn't it? The upper part of the inn used to be the courthouse where people were tried and convicted, and then if the case was made, they were executed on site. It is estimated that around 180 hangings took place right in that spot. They even made the weird decision to keep the original hanging beam up, and the grooves of where the rope wore into the wood can still be seen even to this day. Also, the inn has chosen to keep the original cells where the prisoners were kept just to add the maximum amount of creepiness to the entire place. It's probably haunted as well. This beam serves as a reminder of a different time, I guess, but if we're being totally honest, have things really changed all that much? In our number three spot today, we have these sacrificial offerings. In 2018, researchers sent some remote operated robots beneath the ground in Peru at Chavin de Huantar. These robots stumbled on more than anyone ever imagined when they found a network of 35 interlocked underground tunnels dating back 3,000 years. This is already fascinating and cool, and I have a ton of questions about this whole series of mysterious tunnels, but we've got to save that for another video and instead talk about what it was they found inside of these tunnels, and that is the remains of at least three individuals. They had found more remains of other people, but these three skeletons specifically stood out because they weren't like the others. They weren't the skeletons of people who had high social standings. These remains they found were from people who were actually sacrificed in rituals. They were able to determine this because of the fact that these bodies were found face down under piles of rocks, which is of course of course, not how people of a high social standing would have been buried at the time. This discovery certainly is a reminder of different times on Earth. In our number two spot today, we have an executioner axe. In a Swedish museum, there is an axe that dates back to between 1770 and 1866. This axe isn't just any old axe, however, as it once belonged to an executioner who used it on 88 people. Execution by axe, as you can imagine, was a lot more difficult in reality than movies make it seem, so these axes were specially designed. Rather than being a finely tuned piece of weaponry, these axes were simply designed to crush their way through flesh and vertebrae. I'll save you any more horrible descriptions and just say that the executioner didn't have an easy job for a variety of reasons, and it certainly was a job that required them to stay in great shape. Like I mentioned with the Skurid in beam, it's definitely good that things have changed since the days of public beheadings for capital punishment, but sometimes things don't really even seem 
all that different. In our number one spot today, we have the Tower of Skulls. There's a city in Serbia that has an interesting tourist attraction. This tower dates back to a time when Serbia was still under Ottoman control in 1809. The first Serbian uprising was not going well, but the leader of the rebels, Stephen Sindelic, was determined to do something to change that. During the final stand at Seagar Hill, Stephen fired a round into a keg of gunpowder, which was inside of a fully stocked armory. You can only guess what this did. Of course, it caused a massive explosion that killed not only him and his men, but also all of the Turkish soldiers who were storming the trenches. In order to get their revenge on this move that Stephen made, the Turks then collected all of the rebels' bodies and removed their heads. They took the bodies of 952 rebels and sent them to Constantinople as trophies. And what did they do with the heads? Well, they built a tower, of course. This tower was 15 feet high and the Turks built it right at the entrance to town. The Skull Tower was intended to be a reminder to not mess with them, but the Serbians decided to use their new metal as heck Skull Tower to show them what they were really made of. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Edgine's Cauldron. Edgine's Cauldron is a cast iron pot that was found on the property of the infamous serial killer, Ed Gein. Gein was known for his gruesome crimes in the 1950s, and when police searched his property, they discovered not only the remains of his victims, but also various macabre artifacts made from human bones and skin. Among these items was the cauldron, which Gein allegedly used to hold body parts during his gruesome acts. After Gein's arrest, the cauldron was kept as evidence for several years before being returned to his family. However, it is said that the cauldron is cursed and has brought misfortune to anyone who has possessed it. According to legend, a man who bought the cauldron in the 1960s met a very quick and horrible demise shortly afterward. And another owner reportedly suffered from a series of tragic accidents. Today, the cauldron's whereabouts are unknown, and it remains a mysterious and haunting artifact associated with one of America's most notorious criminals. In our number 9 spot today, we have John Merle's Thumb. John Merle's Thumb is a small, shriveled digit that is believed to have belonged to John Merle, a notorious American criminal who lived during the 19th century. The digit is said to possess a powerful curse and is associated with various tales of hauntings and misfortune. One of the most popular legends surrounding the thumb is that it is cursed to bring bad luck to anyone who possesses it. According to the legend, the thumb was cut off from Miro's body after his execution and passed down through a series of owners who all experienced misfortune and tragedy. It is said that the thumb would cause accidents, sickness, and even death to those who kept it in their possession. Another tale tells of a man who came into possession of the thumb and began experiencing strange occurrences, such as objects moving on their own and eerie whispers in the night. The man eventually became so terrified that he buried the thumb in a field, but it is said that the haunting continued even afterwards. Despite its ominous reputation, John Merle's thumb has been sought after by collectors and paranormal enthusiasts over the years. Some even believe that the thumb possesses a sort of supernatural power that can be harnessed for personal gain. However, most people are content to leave the thumb where it belongs and avoid any potential consequences of disturbing its resting place. In our number 8 spot today, we have Old Neck. Old Neck, also known as the Swan Sea Devil, is a legendary figure that dates back to the 1890s and currently resides in the Swan Sea Museum. During that time, the prestigious St. Mary's Church, located in the town's center, was undergoing renovations, and when a local builder was turned down for the job, he sought revenge. He purchased a row of cottages adjacent to the church, demolished them, and built large brick offices, topping them with a carving of Old Neck. According to legend, he placed a curse on the church himself, declaring that this devil would remain laughing after its destruction. Years later, during World War II, the town was heavily bombed and St. Mary's, along with most of the town, was destroyed. However, the office building with Old Nick remained undamaged. After the war, Old Nick disappeared, but later resurfaced, prompting a petition to return him to his former spot and also a counter petition to keep him far away from the rebuilt church. Currently, Old Nick resides behind glass in the Swansea Museum, and it is said that that the glass enclosure is for the protection of visitors. In our number 7 spot today, we have Charles Manson's TV. There are many haunting tales surrounding this TV, and honestly, that makes a lot of sense considering its history, as it was the one that was present in the Spawn Ranch.
ranch where Manson and his followers resided for a period of time. This ranch was a former movie ranch that had fallen into disrepair and was used as a hideout by the Manson family. It was during their time at the ranch that they planned and carried out their atrocious crimes. The TV was present in the living quarters at the ranch and was said to have played a significant role in Manson's ability to manipulate and control his followers. Manson would often use the TV as a tool to brainwash and indoctrinate his followers with apocalyptic visions and very harmful ideologies. The TV was seized as evidence by the police following the arrest of the Manson family members and has since been sold at auction. The exact whereabouts of the TV at this point in time are unknown, but many have said that the TV is cursed by the evil energy that Manson himself held. In our number six spot today, we have the Atlantis Ring. The Atlantis Ring is a clay ring discovered in 1860 in an Egyptian high priest's tomb in the Valley of Kings. Howard Carter acquired the ring and kept it until his death in 1939. The ring is believed to be over 5,000 years old and is decorated with very unique geometric symbols not seen before in Egyptian culture. What makes this story so intriguing is that Carter, who discovered King Tut's tomb, claimed to have worn the ring as a talisman during the tomb's opening, which protected him from the curse. Unlike other members of his team, he did not die a mysterious death afterward. Instead, he attributed his protection to the ring's power. So I guess the ring is kind of like an anti-cursed object due to its association with the protection of Howard Carter. Although replicas are available, none are believed to possess the power of the original Atlantis ring. In our number five spot today, we have Bella Lugosi's mirror. Bella Lugosi, the actor who famously portrayed Dracula on screen, owned a mirror that is said to be cursed. According to legend, the mirror was given to Lugosi by a fan who claimed that it was possessed by the spirit of a dead woman. Lugosi allegedly experienced strange occurrences after acquiring the mirror, including seeing the reflection of the woman's face in the glass. He tried to get rid of the mirror, but it reportedly kept returning to him. After his death, the mirror passed through the hands of several owners who also reported strange phenomena associated with it, such as cold spots and apparitions. Some even claimed to have seen Lugosi's face staring back at them from the mirror. Today, the whereabouts of the mirror are unknown, and it remains one of the most mysterious and haunted objects in Hollywood history. In our number four spot today, we have Uluru Rock. Uluru Rock is a massive sandstone formation located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is a sacred site for the indigenous people of the area, and it is known as Ayers Rock. Visitors are advised not to take anything from the site, as it is considered disrespectful and can bring bad karma. However, some people still choose to smuggle pieces of rock out of the area. This act has reportedly resulted in severe consequences, including bad luck, illness, and even the death of loved ones. The curse associated with these stolen rocks is so strong that it is common for the company that manages the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology with the returned rocks. This phenomenon happens so often that the company expects to receive at least one letter a day. While some may dismiss this as a mere coincidence, the frequency and consistency of these occurrences suggest otherwise. In our number three spot today, we have Natalie Wood's yacht. The haunting tales surrounding Natalie Wood's yacht, named The Splendor, have been the subject of speculation and controversy for decades. In November 1981, the actress was on a weekend trip aboard the yacht with her husband, Robert Wagner, and friend, Christopher Walken. The circumstances surrounding her death have remained a mystery, but it is known that Wood drowned in the water near the yacht, and her body was found the next morning. The yacht itself has been the subject of strange occurrences and haunting tales ever since. According to reports, strange noises and unexplained occurrences have been observed on board the yacht. Witnesses have reported hearing unexplained voices and footsteps, as well as doors opening and closing on their own. Some have even claimed to have seen the ghostly apparition of Natalie Wood herself still wearing the same clothing she had on the night of her death. Despite the rumors and tales that there is no concrete evidence to support the idea that the yacht that the yacht is actually haunted. However, the tragic circumstances surrounding Natalie Wood's death and the mysterious events that have been reported on the yacht have contributed to its reputation as a haunted vessel. In our number two spot today, we have the Screaming Skull. The Screaming Skull is housed in Burton Agnes Hall in England and is believed to have belonged to Catherine Ann Griffith. Catherine was the youngest in her family and enjoyed wandering the property, but on one such walk, she was attacked and robbed by a group of individuals who left her severely injured. 
Despite being brought back to the hall, Catherine passed away a few days later. Before her death, she requested that her family remove her head and keep her skull so that they would always have a piece of her with them. Following her burial, the family experienced strange occurrences in the house, including bumps, moans, and screams. It was then said that they decided to fulfill Catherine's request and the strange happenings stopped. However, when a maid found the skull and threw it out of a nearby window, which is a strange thing to do when you find a skull, the strange occurrences began again. Eventually, the family decided to place the skull in a secret spot within the walls of the house so that Anne's spirit could rest in peace. The story serves as a reminder to honor the wishes of those who have passed to avoid any lingering spiritual activity. In our number one spot today, we have the Dark Mirror, finishing this list off with another cursed mirror. This one is now a part of the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and Occult, and that in itself is enough to understand why it is considered to be a cursed object. The museum acquired the mirror from its previous owner who had bought it from a psychic fair. Despite being created sometime around the 1820s or 1830s, the mirror still boasts a beautiful appearance, but it is believed to hold some dark secrets. The former owner reported that every time they looked into the mirror, they saw disturbing images that left them feeling very unsettled. Since joining the museum's collection, guests have also reported similar experiences, seeing reflections of their own dead bodies and other unsettling apparitions. Starting off this countdown, we have the stolen artifact of Pompeii. This story has been in the news a lot lately. So after enduring 15 years of bad luck, a Canadian woman returned an artifact that she stole from Pompeii. So this woman, identified as Nicole, apparently stole some mosaic tiles, stones, pieces of plaster, and other little artifacts from the archaeological park of Pompeii during her trip there in 2005. 15 years later, she mailed the artifacts back with a note explaining that she experienced nothing but bad luck after taking the objects. She struggled both financially and physically. In the letter, she wrote that she suffered from breast cancer twice. She wanted to put an end to the curse and didn't want her family to suffer from her actions. So she sent the pieces back. Moving on to number nine, we have the lost treasure of the Lydian. This treasure was found back in the 60s and it was seen as one of the best archaeological discoveries of its time. It was found in Turkey and it was said that there were over 300 pieces of golden ware. If you were down there, you could have been balling out of control, wearing all that fancy jewelry and making yourself look like a stud. But you would quickly become overcome with gold sickness. This is the apparent curse that is attached to these treasures. Gold sickness is when someone will start to get ill over time, but also have an affinity to collect gold. It's like an uncontrollable urge to stockpile gold like you're some sort of dragon. It'll slurp up gold faster than Joey Chestnut scarfs down ice. This curse may have been solidified in 2006. One of the pieces was being returned from America to Turkey, and it was discovered to be a fake. That means someone made a replica and then stole the original. Could this curse have pushed them to make this theft, and now the person is somewhere hoarding large amounts of gold? Maybe this is why CEOs do whatever they can to collect large amounts of wealth they can never spend. Coming in at number eight, we have the ballista balls. Back in the 1980s, a crew excavated hundreds of Roman ballista balls on the border of Israel and Syria. These were used as cannonballs during the Great Revolt. There were so many of them that one man decided to take two. I mean, surely they wouldn't notice that two were missing, right? And honestly, he was right, no one noticed. But in 2015, the balls were returned to the museum's courtyard along with a note from the thief. The note read, and I quote, I stole them in July 1995, and since then, they have brought me nothing but trouble. Please do not steal antiquities. Use that as a warning, folks. Coming in at number seven, we have voodoo dolls. I mean, we should know that these are not to be messed with, but for some reason, people don't take cursed objects seriously, and they pay the price. A pair of voodoo dolls were stolen from an occult museum in New Orleans. The owner said that they noticed this, and they didn't feel any sort of anger because they knew that the person who stole them would feel the fury of the dolls before the sun set on the city. When someone says something as ominous as that, you know that they mean business. She continued to say that the museum was the doll's home and they will be wicked if they are not returned. Just two days later, a man returned with the dolls. Apparently, he was missing teeth, missing fingernails, had pus coming out of his gums, and had sores all over his body. And outside of being in an extreme amount of pain, he said that he was haunted by visions of his own death. The museum owner laughed and told him to go to the hospital and gladly took back the dolls. Moving on to number six, we have the souvenir. Look, I get it. 
You go on a vacation somewhere and you want a souvenir or something to remember your trip by. But don't steal. Instead, just go get something from the local gift shop. I mean, that's what gift shops are there for. Now, one place in particular that is a hot spot for thieves is Arizona's Petrified Forest National Park. Over the years, thousands of individuals have stolen petrified forest rocks from there. One woman in particular stole an artifact and this is what happened to her. She claims, and I quote, Upon returning home, we first found out that my stepmother had kidney failure. Then our dog died. I had a really close call and having a bad auto accident. Our truck broke down needing major repairs. Our cat died. And last night, a gas well blew out a cap causing us to be evacuated from our home. So please take these pieces back before we have any more bad luck. Man, those objects are extremely cursed. So far, they have had 1,200 antiques returned back to them, all sent with letters saying that they were cursed with bad luck. Coming in at number five is Little Bastard. This is one of the most famous cursed items of all time. This was a car driven by James Dean, and it would end up being his doom. But he didn't steal this cursed vehicle, but there were some people who definitely tried. After the accident that took the life of the famous movie star, the car was taken to a body shop where they started to strip it for parts. One night a group of thieves came in to take off with some parts from this car. Now we don't know if these people targeted the body shop or if they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, one of these thieves tried to strip a part off the engine and the whole thing came crashing down on top of him and killed him. The other two men got away swiftly, but that was just one of the many deaths connected to the Porsche 550 Spider. In our fourth spot we have King Tut's Cobra Staff. So of course you all probably have heard the urban legend surrounding King Tut and his curse. Basically it said that King Tut's tomb and all the artifacts that were inside are cursed. And this might indeed be true. After the expedition of King Tut's tomb, several men mysteriously died. Well, rumor has it that this happened all because one of the men stole King Tut's cobra staff. Archaeologist Howard Carter claimed that when they found King Tut's tomb, it was already robbed. But this may have been a cover up. It's thought that him and his team took a couple of artifacts as souvenirs, in particular, the cobra staff. In fact, one of Carter's team members, James Henry Breasted, returned home to find his pet canary eaten by a cobra, and the cobra was still in the cage. Hmm, cobra staff goes missing, and a cobra is found in his home. Coincidence? I think not. Coming at number three, we have Timur's body. When you take a dude out of his tomb, is that stealing? I think so. During World War II, Joseph Stalin had the bright idea that he would mess around with some dark magic during a pivotal moment of the war. I don't know if he was a superstitious man, but I think he should have been because maybe he could have prevented this. Timur was one of the most ruthless conquerors in history. It said that 17 million people died because of this dude. He was at the helm of one of the largest empires in history. On his tomb, it said, He who disturbs me shall unleash an enemy more ruthless than I. And on the day that Stalin dug up Timur, Hitler did his surprise attack on the Soviets. Bad move, Stalin. Sounds like you really dropped the ball on this one. Well, I think that Stalin is a stubborn dude and didn't want to bury him again, but eventually he broke and decided that the curse was real and buried Timur again. And then the Soviets had their first victory against the Germans. In our second spot, we have the Egyptian hieroglyphs. Back in 2004, an unnamed German man stole an ancient Egyptian artifact displaying hieroglyphic text. A couple of months later, the artifact was sent back to Egypt by the man's son. The man had died, so he couldn't do it himself. Apparently, shortly after returning home from his trip, the man's health randomly started to decline. He got unexplained paralysis and fevers. Shortly after, he developed cancer and died. The man's son believed that his father was subjected to the Pharaoh's curse, and he sent the artifact back in hopes to end it. And coming in at the number one spot is the most evil car in America, the 1964 Dodge 330. This vehicle will go down in history as one of the most horrific four wheelers to ever meet the blacktop. This thing has a ton of spooky events that have been tied to it. It started off as a police cruiser. You think something that had the purpose of serving up Justice would have a noble heart. Well, if you had that opinion about this car, you'd be dead wrong. There were three officers who had the misfortune of driving the 330, and each one of them would die in a murder suit. It eventually worked its way into the public, and the first owner said that the car seemed like it was constantly trying to kill her as the doors would fly open and the steering would jam while she was on the highway. Eventually, a church caught wind of this devil's chariot, and they went to go vandalize it so no one could drive it again. Every last 
person involved in this mission died. Some of them were decapitated and others were struck by lightning. Eventually the car was stolen and taken to a chop shop and where it was broken down into parts and these parts were separated into different corners of the world so this car could never harm anyone again. God damn. Coming in at number 10, we have the sarcophagus of Menkarur. The Great Pyramids house some of the most important people of their day. You have to imagine if thousands of people died to build a monument just to put a dead body in, then you'd have to be someone pretty important. I'll be lucky if my ashes get kept in a mayonnaise jar. But in one of the pyramids of Giza was the sarcophagus of Menakur. This was found by British explorer Howard Weiss. This should be no surprise, this was back in the 1800s, and we all know how much the English loved to come through and take everything. One of the craziest things about Vice's excavation of the pyramids was the fact that he used explosives to blast his way inside. This dude clearly had a ton of respect for the architecture. Eventually this guy's demolition style of getting into a pyramid got him what he wanted. He was face to face with the sarcophagus of Menakur. He hauled this thing out and then he slapped it on a boat to send it back to England. Well, on the way back the boat sank and since then the treasure has been lost to man. Coming in at number we have the menorah of the second temple. The English weren't the only ones who would go around taking cool stuff from cool places. I mean, let's be honest. If we go back in time far enough, we will find that every group of people took things from everywhere. Well, the Romans thought that they would take a trip down to Jerusalem to steal the menorah of the second temple. They didn't destroy it, but they brought it back to the temple of peace. That is a very strange thing to call a place where you keep a bunch of stolen artifacts from foreign places. Like, oh, this is the temple of peace? How did you get that menorah? Ruthless blood. Bloodshed? Yeah, that seems nice. Well, the Temple of Peace was eventually burnt to the ground and it's unknown if the menorah of the Second Temple survived this. Really, there's two options here. Either it was destroyed along with the temple or it was taken to Carthage by a group of people called the Vandals. And guys, remember to hit that like button because it really helps us out. Coming in at number eight, we have the Barber Dimes. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when I say the Barber Dimes is me walking out with a fresh haircut. You know what I'm saying? But this is actually something much more valuable than me looking really, really good. The Barber Dimes were minted back in 1907 and they used to be very common, but now there's only a few of them left. That's not the part that makes this story so interesting. There is a treasure of missing Barber Dimes that could be somewhere in Colorado. Six massive barrels of Barber Dimes were transported through Colorado and back in 1907, they never showed up to their destination. They could have been stolen or they could have fallen into the Colorado Black Canyon. If you were to find this stash of dimes today, because of how rare they are and how many there are, they would be worth millions of dollars. So not a bad find. Coming in at number seven, we have Sappho's poems. Sappho is considered one of the greatest minds of ancient Greece. And while there's quite a bit of her work that the world has been able to salvage, it would seem that her poems were lost to the world. I'm not one to dip into poems that often or really ever, but it would have been so interesting to see what poetry looked like in ancient Greece. Also, so much of the literature and knowledge from that era was written and cataloged by men. So it would be cool to see what that era looked like through the eyes of a woman. I mean, I suspect that it would all be insightful pieces that opened up my mind, but they might have just been love stories or the regular frustrations of typical poetry. I don't know, dude. They were lost and we can't read them. I would hope that one day we find these poems and everyone thinks that they're beautiful and they change the way we interact with each other. But when she wrote them, she thought that they all sucked. That would be very funny. Coming in number six, we have the Lost Library of the Moscow Tsars. One of the greatest groupings of ancient writings was put together by the Grand Duchy of Moscow. He collected writings from several ancient civilizations, including the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans, and it's thought that many others were also housed in this place. The location and contents of this library were always very secret. It became an even bigger secret when Ivan the Terrible was in power. It said that Ivan hid the library so the knowledge would never leak into anyone's hands except his own. Well, we know that Ivan was eventually killed in a revolution and it's thought that the location of the library was also lost with him. Either that or the people revolting decided to burn the writings not knowing what they were or how to read them. Or the library could still be somewhere out in Moscow waiting to be discovered. It would be a great find that would open up the world to a priceless collection of literature from a almost forgotten time. Coming in at number five we have Blackbeard's treasure. Blackbeard spent two long years out at sea as a pirate. Before that he worked as a privateer and probably thought the money was trash 
action. That's why he turned to sinking boats and stealing booty. The boat he rode on was the Queen Mary's Revenge, which is one of the most badass things I have ever heard. But eventually, the law caught up with him and his head was chopped off. But this dude was a little rascal. Before he died, he let everyone know that he had a massive treasure buried somewhere, but he didn't tell anyone where it was. Now this might have been a pirate's bluff. Something to send out to the world so he would never be forgotten and send a bunch of hopeful men out to sea looking for something that wasn't there. Or maybe he was telling the truth and there's a multi-million dollar prize hidden away somewhere. Coming in at number 4 we have the Bayeux Tapestry's final panels. Recording history before the printing press was hard. You had to either write everything down by hand or make a super long tapestry like this one. There's no recording it on your phone and then uploading it into the cloud where it will live forever in a file that no one will ever look at. The Bayeux Tapestries was created when William the Conqueror smashed through England and reshaped Europe forever. People think it took years to make but the last chunk is missing so there's no conclusion to the story. To this day, no one knows where these final panels are. That would be like if thousands of years from now someone dug up the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe and everything was there right up to the point where Thanos grabbed the gauntlet from Stark and then it stopped. You know how much that would suck dude? Give me the end of the story. I need it. I didn't even know this thing was missing until right now and I'm already rattled. Coming in at number 3 we have JFK's brain. Here's a very strange one. Someone went out of their way to take the brain of the president of the United States after he was assassinated. No one knows who took his brain or where his brain went. There's a lot of theories about this. Some people think it could have been the FBI or the CIA to cover up that there was a second shooter. Other people think that his brother took his brain as evidence. Some people think that the government hid his brain because it revealed that he was slowly dying from some sickness and they wanted that to be hidden from the public. No matter what the case, it seems like it would be pretty hard to lose track of someone's brain when that someone is the president who was just assassinated by being shot in the head. The brain would be something you would want to hold on to for a very long time. Coming in at number 2 we have the Honjo Masamune. This is the last known sword made by the person believed to be the best sword maker of all time. The sword was made somewhere between 1260 and 1340 and passed down from generation to generation. It probably would have outlasted all of us because the craftsmanship is so exquisite but after World War II there was an order from the Allies to take all weapons from Japanese people in Japan. This stretched to even historical weapons. Once it passed hands from its last owner to the Allied forces, its location was lost to man. The sword might have been thrown in the ocean, it might have been melted down, it might have been stolen and now is kept somewhere safe. But if you are the greatest sword maker in Japan, then that would put you in the running for the greatest sword maker in the world who has ever made swords ever. So this weapon that now is lost could be the greatest remaining sword on the planet. And coming into the number one spot we have Genghis Khan's grave. Probably one of the most ruthless conquerors of all time, this dude had the largest empire in history. The Mongolians are the only people to beat Russia in a land war in the winter. He spread his seed so much that 1% of the planet has his DNA and he killed so many people that it actually lowered the temperature of the planet. And if we look back to where he came from, he basically was living in a village of tents. You want to talk about starting from the bottom, now you're here? This guy did it bigger than anyone. And to cap all of this off, after he was done, he didn't want to be remembered. He didn't want anyone to pray to him or fear him or use him as a force to control other people. He wouldn't let anyone paint a picture of him when he was alive, so anything we see of him was made after he died. So all these images could be highly inaccurate. And he also hid the location of his grave. Genghis Khan requested that he be buried at an unmarked grave in the heart of the Birkin Kaldun Mountains. Then everyone who was part of the burial was killed so no one would know the location. And it's rumored that horses were released up the hills so no one could follow tracks. Obviously this guy caused more death than anyone else but this is still something crazy. Number 10, the Ark of the Covenant. If you've seen Indiana Jones then you're probably familiar with the relic that is known as the Ark of the Covenant. According to the Hebrew Bible, God told Moses to create the Ark of the Covenant in order to store the original tablets on which were written the original 10 commandments. They did so, making it out of acacia wood and covering it in gold. 
old. Around 3,000 years ago, the first temple was built in Jerusalem and the ark was stored within it until 587 BC when the temple was destroyed. After that, it's not known where the ark is or what happened to it. Some people saying that it was hidden before the temple was destroyed. While one legend claims that the ark will not be revealed until the coming of the Messiah, son of David. Some people believe that the ark was taken to Ethiopia and is stored within a church there. But one scholar said that he had seen this alleged ark back in World War II and that it's not the original. The Ark of the Covenant is said to have incredible powers such as instant death if you were to touch it. So if it did come back, who knows what it would be used for. Number 9. Noah's Ark A very famous story from the Bible tells the tale of Noah, who built a massive boat to hold two of every animal to save them from a massive flooding of the earth. The flood took place because God believed that man was becoming too wicked, so he picked the person he believed believed most righteous, Noah, to survive on the ship with his family and the animals in order to repopulate the planet afterwards. After the 150 days of flooding, the ark apparently came to rest on top of the mountains of Ararat. This mountain does actually exist in eastern Turkey, though I think we would have noticed by now if there was a giant boat sitting up there. Many explorers have gone in search of the ark but have yielded no results, most people these days believing that it was just a mythical story and never actually happened. In in order to house that many animals, Noah's Ark would have needed to be absolutely massive. So if the boat is out there somewhere, it's probably just small pieces of it. Number 8. The Real Cross Across the globe, there are hundreds of pieces of wood that people claim to have come from the original cross that Jesus was crucified on. However, it's unlikely that any of these 2x4s actually came from the cross. During the Middle Ages, religious relics were incredibly popular, and supposed pieces of the cross were popping up all over the place, more than could make any sense. Theologian John Calvin famously said that if all these alleged pieces of the cross were gathered together, they would fill the cargo hold of an entire ship. These fake relics aren't just a thing of the past though and are still incredibly popular today. One relic seller on eBay was reported to have sold many pieces of the cross for around $500 a pop. Right now there is no piece of the cross that all scholars can agree is authentic, and it's likely that a true remnant will never actually be found, this being because it would have been made of wood and would have decomposed a long time ago. Number 7. The Copper Scroll The Dead Sea Scrolls were a series of religious manuscripts that were discovered in the mid 1900s, in, you guessed it, the Dead Sea. One of the most unusual of these scrolls is known as the Copper Scroll, it getting this name because it is of course inscribed in copper. The text on the scroll describes the hiding places of vast quantities of treasure, including up to 65 metric tons of gold and silver objects. Unfortunately, we haven't actually been able to find any of these treasures, and that's because the hiding places described on the scroll are incredibly cryptic, it not being your typical X marks the spot buried treasure map. They describe the treasure as being hidden in places like in the great cistern, which is in the courtyard of the little colonnade and in the eastward looking cave of the pillar with two entrances. Yeah, definitely pretty vague. Whether or not these treasures actually exist is also up for debate. Some people saying they were real and captured by the Romans, and some people saying that they were just totally made up. Number 6. The Q Source The Q Source is the name of a hypothetical text that supposedly was used to help write the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. Most historians believe that the Gospel of Mark was the earliest Christian Gospel, and that it and the Q source were used to help the authors of the Gospel of Matthew and Luke write their texts. Archaeologists have so far been unable to find the Q source, leading some people to believe that instead of a written text, it was actually just an oral tradition that was passed down. While there are many copied copies of the famous Christian Gospels, scholars believe it's unlikely that a written Q source would have had many versions, which is what's making it so hard to find to this day. The contents of the Q source is apparently Apparently mostly Jesus' sayings, but I guess we'll never know for sure unless a written Q source is actually someday discovered. Number 5. The Burial Shroud It's well known that after Jesus' crucifixion, he was buried within a cave, being sealed in behind a large stone. The part of the story that's up for debate is whether or not Jesus actually rose from the dead three days later, but we know for a fact he was a real guy who was actually buried in that cave. Mark 15.46 says, Then Joseph bought a linen cloth 
and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Many explorers and historians have gone in search of the linen cloth or shroud that Jesus was buried in. There have been numerous forgeries over the years, most famously the Shroud of Turin, which was actually created in the Middle Ages. What happened to the real shroud remains unknown to this day, and people say that it's unlikely we'll ever actually be able to find it. Number 4. The Ring of St. Edward In the year 1005, St. Edward the Confessor was born into the royal family, and in 1042, he took the throne. He was viewed by the people as a deeply religious leader who did many good things, like removing unjust taxes, healing the sick, and taking a vow of chastity. He also built a cathedral that would come to be known as Westminster Abbey. St. Edward healed the sick using a sapphire ring that he had, and one day he was approached by a beggar who asked him for money. He didn't have any money on him, so he instead removed his ring and gave it to the beggar. Years later, pilgrims who were stranded in the Holy Land were rescued by St. John the Evangelist, who had the ring that Edward had given the beggar. He told the pilgrims to return to Edward and give him the ring, and to tell him that he would be dead in six months. And he was. The ring was kept in Westminster Abbey for many years, but it and many other relics went missing after the dissolution of the monastery. To this day, the ring has not been located, though it's believed that the sapphire from the ring is the center jewel on the imperial state crown. Number 3. The Veil of Veronica The story of the Veil of Veronica was not recorded in its current form until the Middle Ages, and tells the story of a meeting between Saint Veronica and Jesus. She encountered Jesus along the Via de la Rosa and stopped to use her veil to wipe the blood and sweat from his brow. When she did so, Jesus' image became copied onto the veil. After that moment, it then apparently gained mythical powers, like quenching thirst, allowing the blind to see, and even raising people from the dead. There is written evidence that the veil was displayed in the 13th to 15th centuries, but after 1527, its fate is unknown. Some people believe that it was destroyed in Rome, or had even been stolen and made its way through taverns. After its disappearance, many copies started to pop up, despite the Pope prohibiting them from being made. In 1629, he then ordered that all copies of the veil be destroyed, and if you refuse to give up your copy, you would be excommunicated from the church. Number 2. The Nephilim In the Bible, the Nephilim were a group of incredibly large and strong beings who lived both before and after the Flood, being described as being the offspring of fallen angels and human women. Many critics of the Bible laugh at its description of supposed giants, but if these creatures actually existed, it means that there are probably remains of them out there somewhere. Giant human skeletons that would squash any doubt that they had existed. Archaeological evidence from the ancient times does exist that could show the existence of giants, though it has never really been fully analyzed as most people brush it off as not having been possible or real. There are other recordings and even art pieces that may also lend credit to the fact that these giants had once existed, and many people believe that the skeletal evidence is out there somewhere, just waiting to be discovered. Number 1. The Holy Grail If you've seen Monty Python, then you're probably pretty familiar with this one. The Holy Grail or the Holy Chalice is the cup that Jesus apparently used during the Last Supper, which he had with his disciples before his crucifixion. The Bible says, Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. It's unknown what happened to the Grail after this dinner, but there are a few medieval legends surrounding it. During the reign of King Arthur, many people believed that the cup had magical properties, and Arthur took his knights on a quest to try and find the grail. Some people believe that Joseph of Arimathea, the man who had buried Jesus, had traveled to Britain and taken the cup with him. As some scholars think the Last Supper might have never even happened, we'll probably never be able to find the true Holy Grail. Starting off this countdown, we have the Dropa Stones. In 1938, archaeologist Dr. Chipote led an expedition near the Bayan Har Mountains in China. That's when they came across some interesting caves. These caves held evidence that ancient life once lived in them. After searching the caves, they found weird disks buried under thick layers of dust. These disks resembled phonograph records. 
Researchers dated them to be over 10,000 years old. Now, they didn't play music like a typical record, but instead they had hieroglyphics carved into them. When studied, it told a story about a spaceship that crashed into the mountains. Aboard the spaceship were people that called themselves the Dropa. Then later on, the disks were sent to Moscow for further studying. That's when they were placed on this special turntable, and the disks would vibrate or hum in a weird rhythm, as if an electric charge was passing through them. After that, research on the disks stopped. Or some believe research continued and they found slash contacted alien life, which they just didn't tell the public. Either way, this is said to be one of the most mysterious artifacts in the world. In our ninth spot, we have the alien. And guys, here's just your little friendly reminder to hit that thumbs up button. In 2017, a man in Cusco made a pretty terrifying discovery in the southern desert of Peru. The artifact he found looks exactly like a tiny, mummified alien head. An x-ray concluded that the skull had very alien-type features. The skull had angled eyelids with shallow eye sockets two nostrils, and a narrow slit type mouth. Now, whoever was in possession of the skull actually covered it in a type of clay. So that's what you see on the top of it, which makes it appear to look more like an alien. Researchers discovered that it is indeed a real skull but they don't know what it belonged to. So it may just be that this skull belonged to a real life alien from space. Moving on to number eight, we have the Wedge of Ayud. Back in 1974, construction workers in Romania were working in a village in Ayud when they came across some pretty weird objects. These objects were buried 30 feet in the sand by a river. Two of the objects were bones from mastodons, which are very distant relatives of an elephant. I mean, that's cool and all, but the thing that really caught their attention was this mysterious wedged shaped object that was located by the bones. This object contained 89% aluminum, 6% copper, and a total of 12 elements all together. Here's the thing. Aluminum was discovered around 1825, yet this wedge lay next to bones that are from 11,000 years ago. The timeline just doesn't add up. The wedge itself is theorized to be around 10,000 years old. People believe that this object couldn't have existed way back then. An aeronautical engineer stated that this object looks exactly like a piece of a landing gear for landing aircrafts. This has left researchers to believe that aliens crashed their craft from space maybe 11,000 years ago. In our seventh spot, we have the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone is a piece of a stone slab found in 1799. It has a message carved into it written in three different types of scripts. You got ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, Demotic scripts, and ancient Greek. This stone is the key to decipher Egyptian scripts. In 1814, British scientist Thomas Young started studying the stone and made some progress on cracking it. But it wasn't until 1822 to 1824 that the hieroglyphic code was finally cracked. This was done by French linguist Jean-Francois Champollion. It's hypothesized that the slab was created in Egypt in 196 BC, but we still don't know who created it. Now, this one is more of a conspiracy, but it's actually thought that the Rosetta Stone was made by aliens and they delivered it to us from space. Obviously, there's no solid evidence to support this. In fact, archaeologist Paul Wasson believes the Rosetta Stone has lessons to teach us about creating a message that will allow us to communicate with aliens. Because you know, we can't just assume that aliens speak English. In our sixth spot, we have the UFO Tooth Wheel. This is another artifact that is said to have come from aliens in space. So basically, back in the day, a Russian man was using coal to heat his home when he saw something sticking out of a piece of coal. He reported his findings, and researchers said it looked like a tooth wheel to some device. After tests were run on it, it was discovered that it was composed of 98% aluminum and 2% magnesium. Now remember what I said before? Humans discovered how to first make aluminum in 1825. But the piece of coal this artifact was found in was 300 million years old. So how is that even possible? In fact, the tooth wheel resembles parts that we currently use in microscopes and electronic devices. 
Again, back in the day, they didn't have any of those devices. So what the heck? Scientists are still running tests on this object to one day figure out who created it and figure out what its original purpose was. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the iron beads. Back in the day, it was found that ancient Egyptians created iron beads. They were carefully hammered into thin sheets and then they would roll these into tubes. Then they would string them together and make a necklace. While studying them, they found the necklaces were over 5,000 years old. It was also revealed that the beads were made out of pieces from meteorites. And then they would hammer that down. Not only that, but it was revealed that the Egyptians had a more advanced understanding of metalsmithing than we originally thought. Moving on to number four, we have the valuable meteorite. There's a meteorite out there that is more valuable than gold. It was April 23rd, 2019, and a weird colorful orb flew across the skies of Costa Rica. It was orange and green in color. This object was about the size of a washing machine. And then, just like that, it broke up into pieces that got scattered between two villages. One of the pieces was discovered by a woman named Marcia Campos Munoz. She heard the rumble and saw something crash down on her property. She was one of the few people to find a piece of this meteorite. Now, meteorites show up all the time on Earth, so what's so special about this one? Well, it turns out they belong to a rare class called carbonaceous chondrites. They formed when the solar system was still developing. It's believed that these pieces of meteorites will help us figure out what early solar system life was like. Moving on at number three, we have the ancient battery. Back in 1936, outside of Baghdad, a weird discovery was made. They discovered a small clay jar with an iron rod hanging in a copper cylinder in it. This was then soldered shut and sealed with asphalt. Upon analyzing it, it was discovered to produce small amounts of electricity. In fact, researchers said it looks like an ancient battery. However, we still don't know who created this and what its purpose was. But many people believe that this was a battery from an alien spacecraft that crashed down on Earth several thousands of years ago. Aliens are said to be very advanced species, so it could be that they figured out batteries and electricity way before humans ever did. Coming in at number two, we have the alien spacecraft. In 2017, a Hawaiian man with a telescope spotted this weird object leaving the solar system. This object was named Oumuamua, and it's considered the first known interstellar object detected passing through the solar system. Here's the thing. Many people believe that this thing is an alien spacecraft. Let me explain. This thing looks like a space rock, but it's not a comet or asteroid. It's too small and oddly shaped to be an asteroid. The thing is long and shaped like a rocket. No asteroids that we know of are shaped like that. Not only that, but astronomers thought the first space rock to enter our solar system would be a ball of ice and rocks. A comet. But usually there's a cloud of dust and gas surrounding comets, and this object doesn't have that. So then what on earth is it? On top of that, it's said to emit blue colors from it. As a result, rumor has it that it's actually an alien spacecraft. And in our number one spot, we have the Hapatia Stone. In 2013, a weird stone made its way to Earth from space. This stone has managed to leave scientists baffled. They claim it's unlike any other extraterrestrial rock ever found. In 2015, while analyzing the stone, they found it was not part of a meteorite or comet. So they were puzzled as to where it came from. Researcher Jan Kramer said, and I quote, the stone's matrix contains a high amount of very specific carbon compounds, called polyaromatic hydrocarbons, or PAH, a major component of interstellar dust, which existed even before our solar system was formed. Meaning, this stone is super old, like it was around before the sun and planets had formed. It's mind blowing, and they still haven't found out all about it. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the RMS Republic. In 1981, researchers were on a dive when they came across the wreck of the RMS Republic. This ship was built in 1903, and it ended up being lost at sea in 1909. Since 1909, there were plenty of rumors that began swirling that said the ship may have been carrying a whole bunch of treasure. Like treasure that could perhaps be worth billions of dollars. 
One of the rumors was that the ship was carrying US gold coins that would have been worth a minimum of $250,000, but there's an even crazier rumor that the ship was carrying $3 million in coins as it was supposed to be a loan to Russia. Either way, this treasure has actually never been found as it certainly wasn't with the ship when the researchers came across it. Do you guys think that there was never any treasure or do you think that someone else found it first? In our number nine spot today, we have this ancient battle gear. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. These artifacts were actually found recently after a dive in 2013. Just off the coast of Sicily, archeologists located what they believe may have been the site of the first naval battle. They found armor, weapons, helmets, and battering rams, and there were even able to date them back to around 2,000 years ago, which is so unbelievable. They believe that these artifacts are the remains of the Battle of the Agati Islands. This was when the Romans battled against the Carthaginians for over 20 years. It is believed that around 50 ships were sunk in this time, and that is how these remains ended up there for two millenniums. I don't know about you guys, but it's honestly crazy to think about that stuff still being around. In our number eight spot today, we have Dwarka. There was a time when the city of Dwarka was considered to be just a myth, so it came as quite a shock when researchers found the lost city 120 feet under the water. Testing done on the city remains has dated them back to 9,500 years ago, which could possibly place it even before the start of Egyptian and Chinese civilizations. This lost city consisted of six sectors that were each divided into residential and commercial areas. Apparently the great flood that happened 9,000 years ago is the cause for the city to end up submerged in the ocean. It's crazy that we can look back 9,000 years ago and know things like that. The name Dwarka translates from Sanskrit to mean gateway to heaven. With the city, researchers also found construction material, pottery, beads, sculptures, and even human bones and teeth. The city had many, many royal palaces that were all made with crystal and silver and had emeralds as decorations. In our number seven spot today, we have ancient medicine. Just off the coast of Tuscany, in 2013, researchers found the Relito del Pazino, which was a shipping vessel that they were able to date back 2,000 years ago. Among the remains of the ship, they found some items that would help give them insights into what life was like for ancient Romans, and one of the most interesting items was ancient medicinal pills. Researchers believe that these pills were used as an eye medication. They contained zinc compounds, starch, iron oxide, beeswax, and some plant-based materials. This really helped give us more insights into what was considered medicine all the way back then, but I feel like there are many things we still don't know for sure. In our number six spot today, we have the Antikythera Mechanism. I spoke about this crazy artifact in another one of my videos. In the very early 1900s, researchers found an ancient computer just off of a Greek island. This mechanism remains on display at the National Archaeological Museum of Athens because it is honestly unbelievable. This analog computer may have had a ton of uses and researchers aren't 100% sure about all the ways it was used, but it is known to have been some sort of astronomical calculator. It was able to predict eclipses and different planetary placements. It was found 45 meters below the water in the wreck of a ship. This mechanism has been dated back to somewhere around 87 BC, and it is thought to have been created by a Greek scientist, but unfortunately after the creation of this ancient computer, the knowledge of this kind of technology was lost before it was found again. I truly wonder where we would be technologically if we had never lost that kind of information. In our number five spot today, we have Gondwana. This one is hard to think of as an artifact, but I most definitely think it applies for today's list. In 2011, National Geographic published an article where they said that pieces of Gondwana may have been discovered deep in the Indian Ocean. Gondwana is the ancient continent that used to exist when Australia, India, and Antarctica were all one landmass. Apparently, they found the presence of granite and sandstone, which is unusual to find on the seabed and is much more common to continents. There isn't a ton that is known about these microcontinents, but it truly is very mysterious and very fascinating. Since these pieces were from a time when dinosaurs still roamed the earth, they have even found fossils. In our number four spot today, we have these Stone Age artifacts. Swedish divers found artifacts that they believe may have been the remnants of Swedish people all the way back from the Stone Age. These artifacts were found in the Baltic Sea and are believed to be 11,000 years old. They were found 16 meters below the water and their findings consisted of animal horns, flint tools, wood, and ropes. 
It's crazy that researchers have the ability to date these kinds of things as far back as they have with these ones. Apparently they were also pretty well preserved when found, which is a whole other mystery to me. It may seem like a small find, but every artifact can help give us insight to what life on Earth was like all those years ago. In our number three spot today, we have the Bronze Age sewn boat. 2014 saw quite an interesting archeological discovery when the researcher Gilia Boeto revealed that they had discovered a Bronze Age sewn boat. This boat was found in a cove in Croatia and has been dated to have been wrecked in 1200 BC, which is unbelievable. The boat is made out of wood that is sewn together by ropes, roots, and willow branches. It is seven meters long and two and a half meters high, and considering the fact that it is 3,200 years old, it certainly has held up remarkably. This boat has given us at least a small glimpse into how boats were made all the way back then. Sometimes I hear about things that really leave me in awe of the things that have gone on on our earth. It's so unbelievably cool to think about. In our number two spot today, we have the Yonaguni Monument. Who would have thought that hammerhead sharks could lead to the discovery of an ancient artifact? Well, not exactly, but in the sea just off of Yonagani in Japan, there is a diving location that has a high population of hammerhead sharks, making it a large and popular attraction. In 1986, a diver in the area noticed some formation on the seabed that resembled a structure of some sort. This led to a team of scientists going on a dive to gather more information, and this is when the Yonaguni Monument was officially discovered. The monument is made out of sandstone and mudstone, but here's the mysterious thing. Scientists can't agree on its origins. There are some who believe that this is a natural formation, but there are some who swear that it is man-made. There are pretty reasonable arguments for both sides, and considering the fact that this thing is at least 10,000 years old, I guess it's fair to say that we may not have all the answers. In our number one spot today, we have Stardust. You guys, I truly don't even know what to make of this one. So apparently 2.7 million years ago, a star exploded and German researchers have now been able to locate pieces of it while they were drilling in the Pacific Ocean. I can't even believe that is a sentence that is true. This star was a type two supernova, which means that the star had to have at least eight times the mass of the sun and it also ejects iron 60 during the explosion. Somehow the star fragments ended up in the Pacific Ocean to be discovered in the remains of magnetic bacteria that were feasting on the iron from the star. Scientists believe it happened all that time ago because apparently iron 60 is way too young for Earth, whatever that means. Science is so crazy sometimes, you guys. Coming in at number 10, we have the Ulfbert Swords. Imagine if Excalibur was real and it wasn't just a story after all. Here at number 10, we have swords that are so powerful, they still have experts baffled. When you think of medieval times, you probably picture a bunch of people carrying cool broadswords everywhere. But in reality, swords were actually incredibly expensive to have made, even around this time. Anywhere between 1200 to 24 grand in today's currency for one sword. And that's just for a pretty good sword for a really good sword well get ready to sell your soul man the Ulfbert swords were the strongest sharpest and most flexible swords ever made, though no one really knows who made them, except maybe a guy named Ulfbert, but there's no record of him. Primarily associated with Vikings, researchers speculate that the swords were made in the Kingdom of Francia. The Kingdom of Francia, now France and Germany. These suckers could even cut through chain mail and were the perfect blend of materials. The process for combining the materials required a 1600 degree Celsius oven, which was not only hot enough to melt the metals, but also helped draw out any impurities. However, here's where things get weird. The process couldn't be replicated until the industrial era after the sword stopped production after 200 years. So how could they have been made before that? No one knows who began it and who carried on the tradition, but the blade still remains some of the finest ever made in history. Coming in at number nine, we have Stonehenge. Located in Wiltshire, England, the Stonehenge is one of UK's most famous landmarks. It consists of a bunch of standing stones in a ring, with some stones placed on top of each other. It's said to have taken 1500 years to build this. It was built around 5,000 to 4,000 years ago. Some stones are 30 feet tall and weigh 25 tons. The smallest stones weigh about four tons. So how the heck did these people manage to build this big structure? That is something we still don't have the answers to. It's not like they had the machinery back then to help them. So how did they move these hefty rocks and then get them on top of each other? Did they possess superhuman strength or what? Not only that, but 
but we don't know why they were built. Some believe that it was part of a burial ground. Others think that it was part of ritual activities, but we still don't know for sure. And unless a builder comes back from the dead to tell us, I doubt we'll ever figure out what the purpose behind Stonehenge is. Coming in at number eight, we have the Dropa Stones. I honestly love how many times I get to talk about potential alien stuff on this channel. In 1938, 716 12,000 year old circular disks were discovered in a cave between the border of China and Tibet. About one foot in diameter, the disks allegedly told the story of an alien ship crash landing and that the ship contained the Dropa people. Near the site, Dr. Chi Putai also found tiny skeleton bodies with larger than normal heads, like they were kind of like oval in shape. Though no photos or documentation to prove that that part exists. The discs were stored in Beijing University for two decades before they were released to be studied, and one researcher was the one to decipher the extraterrestrial tale in just four years. However, after the stones were taken down after the exhibition, they haven't been seen since. Many say they are still at the university, while others speculate whether they existed at all. Some, however, were sent to Russia to be studied, where part of their studies included placing the discs on a turntable. The discs appeared to hum, but any further details on what they found still remain a mystery. In our seventh spot, we have the Petrodox. This next artifact is quite strange and might have been made by aliens. Let me explain. So back in 1998, a man named John J. Williams discovered something quite strange. He was out hiking in North America when he saw this thing sticking out of the ground. It looked as if it was an electrical connector. When he unearthed it, he discovered that this device was embedded into a rock. The rock has three metallic prongs just sticking out of it, and it wasn't glued or welded into the rock, leading researchers to believe that it existed while the rock was forming. But here's the thing, research shows that the rock is 100,000 years old. Back then, we didn't have electrical components like that, so what the heck? Now, Williams won't let anyone break into the object to further analyze it, but x-rays done on the stone show that it has a weird, opaque internal structure. He's convinced that this thing is from an advanced ancient civilization, or from an extraterrestrial race, aka aliens. Like, I'm not gonna lie but it's pretty weird, so just saying. Coming in at number six, we have the Baghdad Battery. Here is yet another example of how our ancestors absolutely soared past our expectations of them. We thought electricity was just a modern thing. A 2,000 year old battery discovered by Wilhelm Koenig in 1940. It was uncovered during a dig of an ancient village near Baghdad and set the minds of archeologists Spinning. It is a 5.5 inch high clay vessel with a copper cylinder inside and an oxidized iron rod suspended within the cylinder, not touching the sides, and the two entrances are closed off by asphalt plugs. It is suspected that this makeshift battery served as a way of electroplating gold onto silver, only needing to be filled with some kind of acid like wine or vinegar in order to work. Today, some researchers believe that it was actually just a storage container, but that's not true. Come on. But replicas created by American electrical researcher Willard Gray after World War II actually produced around two volts of electricity. I love discoveries like this because it tells us just how ahead of the game we were and gave a delicious dose of foreshadowing at where we are heading as a civilization. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the witch bottles. Back in 2019, contractors were demolishing the chimney of a pub and inn in England when they came across something frightening. Inside the chimney were bottles containing things such as fish hooks, human teeth, and urine. But this isn't actually that weird of a find. In the 15th, 16th, and 17th century, people kept these in their home. They were referred to as witch bottles and were meant to keep witches away. Some of the bottles had fingernails and hair in them, and those were meant to act like charms to ward them away. But they were most commonly filled with pins, thorns, and urine. Apparently, the urine attracted the witches to the bottle, and then they would be trapped on the pins. These bottles have been found in churchyards, old buildings, and riverbanks all across Great Britain. I mean, I think that would be a pretty cool discovery if you found that in your house, just minus the jars of urine. Coming in at number four, we have a 250,000 year old aluminum wedge. Aluminum, a material found in every kitchen for barbecue or, you know, just like cooking in general. It's one of the most common place materials found on Earth, making up approximately 8.2% of the Earth's crust. However, we as humans only figured out how to extract it in the 1800s, taking even longer to figure out how to make it cost effective to do so. So when researchers found a five pound crust, 
crafted aluminum object in Romania, buried next to 10,000 year old Macedon bones, they had some questions. The object has clearly been crafted by someone for some purpose and is a combination of several materials, aluminum making up 89% of that. The aluminum wedge has been theorized to have been everything from a tool to a landing foot of perhaps an extraterrestrial ship. This object also feeds into the theory that there was a far advanced human civilization that existed long before us that was wiped out. This isn't the first time we've talked about aliens and forgotten civilizations and honestly, the more videos we make, I'm getting swept away by the possibilities because how like nuts would that be? Anyways, whatever it was used for or whomever it used to belong to remains a mystery and leaves more questions than answers behind. In our third spot, we have the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone was discovered in 1799 and is a broken off section of a bigger stone slab. On it, it contains messages written in three different types of scripts. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, Demotic scripts, and Ancient Greek. This stone is said to be the key to decipher Egyptian scripts. The stone was discovered by soldiers belonging to Napoleon Bonaparte's army. In July of 1799, they were digging around and found it near the town of Rashid, and it was built into an old wall. In 1814, British scientist Thomas Young started studying the stone and made some progress with cracking it. But it wasn't until 1822 to 1824 that the hieroglyphic code was cracked. This was done by French linguist Jean-Francois Champollion. It's hypothesized that the slab was created in Egypt in 196 BC, but we still don't know who created it, and honestly, Honestly, why? Some say it holds the key to be able to communicate with aliens and that it actually came from space. At this point, who knows? Maybe we just seem like we love aliens. Aliens! Coming in at number two, we have the Nazca Lines. Despite years of research, the Nazca Lines still don't make sense. For those of you who haven't heard, the Nazca Lines are massive geoglyphs that can even be seen from space. In fact, they can only be seen fully from the sky. Located 250 miles south of Lima, Peru, created by the Nazca people, there are over 70 precise depictions of animals including spiders and hummingbirds, plus an image of a decapitation and a large humanoid figure known as the astronaut. Hmm. Guys, come on, aliens. Some of the designs from the geoglyphs measure around 30 miles, and experts have no idea how or why these drawings were created with such precision. After all, humans lack the tools to build such incredible designs. Or did they? It really makes you wonder what abilities or perhaps extraterrestrial intelligence was available to the Nazca people that we can't comprehend today. And in our number one spot, we have the Shroud of Turin, otherwise known as the Holy Shroud. This is a piece of linen that is said to have been wrapped around Jesus during his burial. What's fascinating is how this piece of linen cloth appears to have a facial outline of Jesus' face. Of course, over the years, there have been disputes to whether or not this is authentic. But in the 1970s, it was discovered that the markings on the cloth were consistent with a crucified body, and that the blood stains on it were from real human blood. But others argue that the shroud doesn't come from the right time period as Jesus. And in 2018, a team of researchers claimed that the blood stains couldn't have come from him. Either way, it acts kind of like a symbol for the story of Christ. If it's not real, then someone please explain to me the whole face and body print that I see on it, because I'm genuinely curious. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have a throwing spear. A throwing spear that was approximately crafted over 10,300 years ago was discovered by Dr. Craig Lee from Montana State University in 2007. It was discovered in northern Wyoming. 10,300 years ago, holy moly. Just saying that is so trippy and hard to wrap my brain around the idea of people existing at that point. But in any case, this spear at first glance appeared just like a stick. But then after closer inspection, he discovered that it was a dart from a throwing spear. At this point, it is the oldest frozen artifact Artifact found yet. It's been a source of inspiration for others to continue the hunt for artifacts that are being revealed as a result of melting ice patches, and it certainly has created a sense of urgency for people to get hunting for these unbelievable items. In our number nine spot, we have the Yukon Treasures. A size four moccasin shoe from 1400 years ago was found melting in the Yukon, and my inner shopaholic is super excited about it. So of course I had to include it on this list. Along with this shoe, two other items were found. A barbed antler projectile point from about 1200 years ago, and throwing darts from 9,000 years ago. 
Apparently they were found by a husband and wife in 1997 who were hunting doll sheep in the Yukon mountains when they smelled something extremely strange. It was dung. Yes, poop from a caribou. But the thing is, caribou hadn't been in this area for many, many years, so they decided to inspect it. <laughs> Naturally? <laughs> I wouldn't. Anyways, I guess they discovered that the poop was from thousands of years ago that had frozen into ice, and close behind it were these artifacts that had melted along with it. Pretty wild. In our number eight spot, we have animal hair rope. While out exploring the mountaintops of Western Mongolia, archeologist and researcher Isaac Hart of the University of Utah discovered something quite interesting that he felt would truly help with discovering more about the Mongolia people in ancient times. They discovered a finely woven piece of animal hair rope. This rope was first thought to have been dropped in the ice recently, however, after scientists performed some radiocarbon tests on it to see how old it was, it was proven to be more than 1,500 years old. Wow, that's some old rope. In our number seven spot, we have horn curls. On this same trip, looking for more artifacts, Isaac Hart found some Argali sheep skulls and horn curls from 1,500 years ago, which were stacked in a pile by ancient hunters. And this finding completely discounted some old assumptions about the Mongolian people in the past. They were long thought to be herding societies, but these findings show that perhaps they were big hunters on mountain ice. Wow, sometimes just talking about this just makes me feel super grateful to be alive today. Although we are all wimps now, just going outside when it's cold, you know, I'm already looking for the outdoor heater. Where's the outdoor heater? <laughs> What are we in ancient times? In our number six spot, we have Iron Age tunic. Apparently, as Norway's glaciers begin to melt, archaeologists are beginning to uncover a ridiculous amount of ancient treasures, and some say it is about 2,000 plus items to date. One of the most notable items, in my opinion, is some recovered clothing that was found. Honestly, not one item is better than the other. They all tell a story from the past and help us better understand how mountain populations lived. But still, I think it is so cool to see that they found some clothing that's approximately from 300 AD, an Iron Age tunic to be exact. That's not that old though compared to some of the other items that were found on this dig that were approximately 4,000 years old, but still, pretty cool. And one of the older items that was found is in our number five spot today, which is the walking stick. Now this item also is not as old as some of the throwing darts that were found, but it's so unique and cool that I had to put it on the list. It's not just any old walking stick. It's a walking stick with runic inscription. Whoa, so cool. I actually have rocks with ruins on them at home that I bought from like a new AG store and I love to look at them. Ruins are truly fascinating and quite beautiful. So I'm a big believer in symbology and the energy and power infused in symbols. So anyways, when I saw this recovered walking stick from the 11th century AD, I kind of freaked out and needed to share. In our number four spot, we have arrowheads. This is actually so cool. The entire video has been so fun to research, but finding this out was very interesting. I definitely need to go to museums more. I don't think I knew that I enjoyed history so much. Anyways, in 2003, a hiker was walking in a mountain pass near Sion, Switzerland, when he came across some treasures. Not gold, sadly, but what he found were items that are arguably way cooler from a Stone Age hunter from over 3,000 years ago. They were fragments of a bow, an arrow case, arrowheads, and leg coverings, all believed to be revealed due to the ice in the glaciers melting due to the rapidly changing climate. Pretty crazy. Imagine just going for a hike and discovering some ancient artifacts. I bet you there will never be a more interesting moment in your life. Although fine, the birth of your future child could be fairly special too. In our number three spot, we have the Viking whisks. Technically not considered ancient artifacts, but I thought this was cool and it needed an honorable mention. The melting of glaciers in Norway has actually revealed a lost mountain pass, and with it, hundreds of Viking artifacts have been discovered. 
The pass was discovered back in 2011, as ever since, the glaciers have continued to melt and more and more artifacts have been recovered. The archaeologists believe the pass was used from the Roman Iron Age 300 AD to the Viking Age 1000 AD. From horseshoes to sled fragments to wooden needles to wooden whisks, all kinds of artifacts have been recovered. One of the most unique items include a Viking mitten and a blue textile rug. Wow, imagine finding a rug frozen on a mountain. Also, it's just wild to think that the Vikings had rugs. All I can think of when I think of Vikings is war. So, it's probably just me and my limited imagination due to my limited knowledge of history. In our number two spot, we have arrowheads. Over 100,000 artifacts were recently uncovered in a place called Nunalik in Alaska. These artifacts belong to the Yupik peoples who lived there. There have been stories told over many centuries of a gruesome massacre that occurred during the bow and arrow war days, which was a series of long, brutal battles. Up until recently, the area had been frozen in the subsoil known as permafrost. The most notable items that were found were the slate arrow points that further proved the stories that have been told about these war times. Although these items aren't technically ancient, they are truly a wonder for archaeologists to discover and I thought it needed to be on this list. In our number one spot, we have an ancient lunchbox. A 3,500 year old lunchbox was discovered in Switzerland in the Swiss Alps. No, it didn't have a 3,500 year old cheese sandwich in it, but it did have traces of ancient cereal. Whoa, some ancient dude was just walking around the Alps eating an ancient version of Lucky Charms. The lunchbox is a Bronze Age wooden container and apparently the food traces were of wheat and barley or rye grains. The lunchbox was made from Swiss pine and its rim was made from willow sewn together with European larch twigs. It was found in a melting ice patch in 2012. That's incredible. Probably my fave find on this list, but anything to do with with food just makes me excited. Excuse me as I go pour myself a bowl of Lucky Charms. Feel free to join me if you like. Number 10, Pompeii Graffiti. What do Romans and Zoomers have in common? Probably their love for weird and semi-unfunny memes. Yes, even thousands of years in the past, people were leaving all sorts of tasteful messages on the walls for all to see. Insults, compliments, but more interestingly, threats. Most of these are obviously jovial in nature, but there is one that does stand out as interesting. The message reads, To the one defecating here, beware of the curse. If you look down on this curse, may you have an angry Jupiter for an enemy. Seems silly enough, right? Well, it is, until you learn that it was found at Pompeii the city buried by a volcano. Sounds like a fairly wrathful act, eh? Seems like Jupiter was being a bit of a party pooper. Number 9. Hans Holbein's The Ambassadors Hans Holbein is a classic artist, but one of his most famous works stands out as a grim omen. In 1533, Holbein would be commissioned to portray ambassadors Jean de Dinfy of France and Georges de Save of Lavour. This work is an excellent piece, but it includes an enigmatic secret, a strangely proportioned skull. There are numbers of theories as to why this was included, one of the most popular coming from Oscar Bachman and Pascal Grenier, who suggest that the skull is meant to contrast the beauty and value found within life against the grandeur of death. Holbein would pass almost exactly one decade later, which arguably completes the implication of this message in its entirety. Number 8. The Voyager Messages The Voyager Deep Space Program helped NASA further its understanding of the solar system with absolutely breathtaking images of the universe that were sent back to Earth. However, those messages weren't the only thing that the Voyagers were meant to carry. 
Inside each probe is a golden phonograph disc titled The Sounds of Earth, which includes several greetings, sounds of whales, a crying baby, waves on a shoreline, music from a scatterplot of important musicians from around the world, and greetings in around 55 different languages. While this seems like a friendly handshake from one part of the universe to another, the question must be asked, what will find this disc? What will they think of us? And what will they do next? The Voyagers are still out there, and they are expected to no longer be able to transmit anything to us in roughly around 2036. Which probably means that if anything does find them, we won't be getting a warning until they're here. Number 7. The Mayan Calendar Portents of doom are common enough in history, however 2012 was an interesting year for such fears, as the turn of a new millennium caused a number of people to become absolutely certain that the world would end. To justify their claims, they looked to the past, and one message seemed to leave people more certain than others. Now, let's be clear, the Mayans didn't actually make this calendar. That would have to be attributed to the early Mesoamericans, who termed the end of a period as, of the time as the Bakhtun. Bakhtun 13 was the end of a particularly large period, and when lined up with our calendar, it matched up alongside the date of December 2012. So, was the message true? It was fun at the time, but after the date passed, the real horror was revealed as people admitted to selling their possessions and homes with the expectation that they just wouldn't need them anymore. All because of a calendar period ending in a way that most computer technicians would just describe as stack overflow. Like your car doesn't explode when you max out the mileage counter, it just resets to zero. So the terror here was more that people actually believed this crap, just because the Mesoamericans didn't make a Bakhtun 14. Jeez. Number 6. Qin Shi Hong's Meteor so in 211 BC, the Qin Dynasty was in full swing and everyone was having a great time, suffering under the rule of their tyrannical overlord Qin Shi Hong. Suddenly, a meteor fell from the sky, landing in the province of Dongzhen. Upon inspection, the meteor was revealed to have been inscribed with the words, The first emperor will die, and his land will be divided. Whether or not this was an elaborate hoax or not, the Emperor was paranoid enough to demand that the writer come forward, and when no one did, he had everyone who lived in the area executed. The funny thing is, a year later it came true. Qin Shi Hong died, and while China remained somewhat unified, the Qin Dynasty fell only three years later. And soon after that, the Han Dynasty took over, ending the Qin's dynasty's short reign. Unfortunately, the meteor was shattered, so this brilliant moment has been permanently lost to time. Number 5. Egyptian Tomb Curses Ah, Egypt. One of the greatest civilizations known to mankind. Thank goodness that a bunch of Europeans decided to rob the graves of their ancestors or else they'd have been really bored or something. Uh, however, when these losers decided to pop open those tombs, likely searching for gold, they instead found a cavalcade of curses. Some of these read as such. Any ruler who shall do evil or wickedness to this coffin, may his heir not inherit. As for all men who shall enter my tomb, there will be judgment. I shall cast the fear of myself into him. And all who enter this tomb will make evil against it. May the crocodile be against them in the water, and the snakes against them on land. May the hippopotamus be against them in water, and the scorpion on land. Aside from being incredibly cool and threatening, these grave robbers were also plagued with visions of ghosts, and many died, usually from disease-carrying insects and violent animals. Huh, who could have seen that coming? Number 4. 
The Ring of Senesenius. This ring was discovered by a farmer plowing his land in 1785, but wouldn't be brought to archaeologists until years later. Made from 12 grams of gold, the ring contains an inscription in Latin which reads, Senesene vivus in Deum which kind of translates to live in God, although the ring apparently has some spelling errors, so whatever, it doesn't matter. A tablet was discovered which was inscribed within a curse, claiming that whoever removed the ring would never again be in good health until it was returned to Nodens. The archaeologist who excavated the site decided to call upon a close friend to research the actual location of Nodens, a professor at Oxford named J.R.R. Tolkien. That's right, baby, this little curse inspired the Lord of the Rings. Number three, the Serbian Skull Tower. Signs are very effective means of ensuring through symbology that people can understand what they mean even without speaking the language of the people that they were made by. For instance, red is generally the color that is universally used to denote that everyone should stop, and skulls usually denote that everyone in the area should probably turn around and leave. There's no better example of this than the Skull Tower, located in Serbia. Apparently, in 1804, there was a Serbian uprising against the Ottomans, an uprising that failed in spectacular fashion. After their battle, the governor of the area decided that the easiest way to ensure no one tried it again was to create a tower out of the skulls of the rebels, sending a very clear message to anyone with seditious thoughts. Just try it. Number 2. The Czech Republic Warning Stones as the world is racked with an oncoming ecological disaster that you should be as terrified of as I am, artifacts have been uncovered which have revealed some fascinating messages. Prior to the invention of the internet, the residents of the area had the idea to inscribe messages on stones which would warn people of incoming disasters such as droughts, famines, bad harvests, food shortages, and just incoming hunger in general. This last part led to their being dubbed as the Czech Hunger Stones, with dates going back as far as 1417. Some quotes that can be found on these messages are deeply disturbing, such as, When you see me, weep. I guess the Morning Stones are doing their job pretty well this time around. Number 1. Charles Maffel's Final Message and Jeremiah Burke's Final Message Messages in bottles are some of those neat little things that are synonymous with the adventures of pirates and other seafaring individuals. These messages aren't exactly as whimsical. In 1909, the vessel Waratah set sail from South Africa to Australia, but went missing at sea. Numerous people attempted to claim that they'd received letters in bottles from drowned sailors, and while most were clearly fake, one did prove to be genuine, matching with the sailor's handwriting and the time with which he would have had to write it. The message reads, Top heavy. One side a wash. Goodbye, mother and father. Signed, Charles McFell, Greaser. Several years later, a similar incident would occur with the sinking of the Titanic and the discovery of a letter sent from Jeremiah Burke, reading, From Titanic, Goodbye All, Burke of Glanmire, Cork. The message was written on a scrap of paper, then placed inside an empty bottle of holy water given to the man by his mother prior to the voyage. She died before she could read it. Mm -hmm.